out afterward. So again, welcome um, to, to the call, Best Practices for Converting Phone Calls into Patients. Uh, the reason we've decided to host this web webinar is, is we've really identified a growing need to convert the leads that come in um, through the web via either a phone call or, or form submittal into, into new patients. And part of the performance program really has evolved into this help um, or this assistance and coaching into um, how can we get better at at getting, turning our, our calls into patients. Um, so the idea being once we build a website that, that uh, represents your practice and, and put a marketing effort in place that, that allows us to, to drive people to your website and then put the information in place and the, and the call to action in place where they, they decide to choose your practice and give you a call, how can we best uh, make sure that they do schedule an appointment and come in. Um, so one of the things we've, we've really done is expand the, the performance program to include this, this coaching and we'll start to, in 2013, really increase our, uh, our, our role and increase the, the component of this program that, that, that helps um, improve this. So, to, to kick this off, we decided to host a webinar, and, and uh, hosting this or, or featuring this webinar will feature uh, Larry Gazzardo, and, and some of you guys uh, know him already. Um, he's a training specialist and dental consultant with over 24 years of experience. Uh, I know he's worked with, with uh, some of you, but, but um, really his, one of his specialties is, is working with, with uh, dental practices to to really get better at this process. Um, so I'm going to turn it over right now um, to, to Larry, and he's going to take you through uh, the webinar. Um, I will just say that, that right now your phones are uh, muted. Um, we are going to unmute them at the end of, uh, at the, end of the call um, to, make open, uh, to, to really open up um, questions and, and comments. Now, if you look at your right-hand box, um, you'll see that there's an opportunity to write down or type in questions. If at any time you have a question, you want to type that question in, um, I will sort of either in, in interject that question as, as necessary or uh, we'll hold that question to the end and I'll, I'll sort of present it to Larry and he can address that as well. So. Thank you very much uh, for jumping on. We really appreciate uh, working with you, and, and we know that you're going to hopefully find uh, a lot of benefit from this call. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Larry Gazzardo, and uh, I have to tell you how excited I am to be able to spend this time with you this afternoon. You know, I can't think of anything more frustrating than to go through all the time, energy, and effort, and even expense to have patients call your practice and not have them schedule an appointment. I don't think there's anything that could be more frustrating than that uh, at all. And so I find that there are some really good practices that people are following in offices just like yours that really help them convert a lot of these phone calls into new patient appointments. You know, I'm of the opinion that I'm willing to talk to anybody who's willing to talk to me. Um, I've also developed the mindset that I believe people do want to talk to me or do want to talk to you when they call your practice. They, they want to schedule an appointment. It's just that sometimes, uh, even though we don't mean to, we might uh, turn the patient off or we may not answer their questions properly or we may not do a good job of conveying who we are and what we do, so they say thanks, hey, you've been real nice, and then they go to the next name that's on the computer search uh, uh, for dentists that they were looking for. So I want to talk about how you can avoid that, and I want to do it by not recreating the wheel. Um, what we're going to do here is take some of the best practices that we have seen uh, that I have been teaching for years uh, in other offices, and I've seen the success that they've had them, and I want to make it simple for you. Um, I want it to be simple because I want you to be able to make it your own. 
because I want your personality and I want your style to come through. I don't want you to feel like you've got to be somebody special or somebody different to be able to talk to somebody who calls on the phone uh, because you don't have to be. Because I know that if I ask you to memorize a script or to try to be some kind of actor or actress or something, then gosh, you guys already know. You're, you're not going to come across as being very authentic or very genuine or, or very sincere. Um, I know every single one of us have called a customer service department at some point in our life, and we knew right from the beginning when we got that call that we were talking to the wrong person. Um, so we have to understand that enables, you know, being able to convert phone calls into new patients and all that, that um, we have to develop a type of customer service personality. Um, the way we do that is through our tone of voice. Now, the reason why we do that through our tone of voice is because people can't see us. They can't see our facial expressions. They can't see our body language. Um, I'm talking to you right now. You can look at your screen. You can see the slide that I have up there. Some of you know who I am, but many of you who are out there don't know who I am. I'm praying that my tone of voice is conveying to you a very positive attitude that I'm really excited to be here, that I'm glad that you're on this webinar with us, and that I want to share with you all the things that I have seen and know to work and want to share them with you because all I have is my tone of voice. And so I want you to realize that your tone of voice plays a very, very important role in converting these calls. Now, part of the reason why your tone of voice plays such an important role is because we know that when people are making decisions, emotion has a lot to do with it. We'd, we'd like to think that it's all done logically, and it's all done because everything makes perfect sense to everybody. But in reality, we know that it does have to make sense. But we also know that how you say something is probably going to be more important than what you said. You see, so that's why I'm not so worried about what you will say. Now, I have some outlines for you, and I do have some phrases that I'll be sharing with you during the webinar to help kickstart things. But I don't want you to think that you've got to learn how to persuade people or how to manipulate them or how you have to talk them into doing something because we want people to feel good about the decision that they're making, and we want them to feel excited about meeting you and getting to see the office. You see, you and I all know that when a patient feels that way, they keep that appointment. They fill out your paperwork. They answer your telephone calls. When they're not so excited about you know, going to your office or what they're going to find when they get there, then they lose interest very, very quickly. And you guys know as well as I do that there's a lot of competition out there today. And so it's very easy for them to click the next name on their search. So I want you to understand, as you're putting your customer service personality together, there is some emotion that plays into this, and there's some logic that plays uh, into this. We also have to remember that effective communication requires a mixture of both combined with some preparation. Uh, we can't just wing it when these folks are calling us on the phone because they throw us off. And I'm going to talk to you about where we get trapped in the way that they throw us off and in the questions uh, that they uh, ask us when they call on the phone. We don't want to be able to get into any trouble. So you create a customer service personality. Part of the reason why your tone is so important is because it is through your tone of voice that you actually project your attitude. And I think that every one of you would agree with that. You see, your attitude is what appeals to their emotions. You see, if they get the idea that you've got a positive attitude, then they're going to want to learn more and pay attention to what you have to say. So what I want you to see is that attitude equals listening. If you want people to listen to you, use the right tone of voice. Now, of course, this is a speech course. But all of us know we don't like people who talk really, really low. And on the same token, we don't like people who talk really high. You know, we like people who have a rather um, level tone of voice. We don't like people who talk really loud inside the phone. 
all of us have been sitting in a small room with somebody who's talking on their cell phone, right? And we wish they would shut up. And on the same token, we don't want to have this ugly sound of somebody saying something when they're speaking so softly. So we like somebody who has a casual manner to their tone of voice. We like somebody who has a, a level tone to their voice. We don't like it when people raise their voice at the end of a sentence, like, well, how is it that I can help you? You know, where it almost sounds like a question. Uh, it makes you sound very, very youthful, uh, not nearly as professional as you probably are. We like people who just have a nice level tone. But the important thing for you to get is that it's through your tone of voice that you project your attitude. And when patients realize that you've got a positive attitude and that you're excited about what you're saying, then they're going to listen to you. As I said earlier, all of us have called the customer service department. We knew within the first few seconds of that phone call whether we thought we got the right person or not. Matter of fact, studies have all told us that when we meet people physically, it usually takes us about, oh, we're real generous, about 40 seconds before we decide whether we think this person is uh, you know, wealthy, whether we think they're smart, you know, whether we think they drive a nice car. My point is, is that within a very, very short period of time, physically, we're going to size up this person and we're going to make an assumption about them. I know we're not supposed to, but we do that. Now, those same studies tell us that when we hear people over the phone, like just through their tone of voice, we develop that opinion about each other within about six seconds. So I, what I want you to hear is that people are sizing you up before you've barely even said hello. That's how important tone is. So we have to make sure that we use it to our best advantage. Now, the words that you speak, that's the technique that you use. You see, because the technique is what appeals to logic. I said earlier that what you say also has to make sense as well as sound good. It can't just sound good. So it's the logic uh, within your technique that promotes understanding. So if you want people to listen to you, control your tone of voice because it projects a positive attitude. If you want them to understand you, then choose your words carefully and say your words in a certain order that makes sense to them. So a good customer service personality puts the technique and attitude in action, and they work together. Um, you would think I wouldn't have to bring this up, but because all of you are talking to patients over the telephone, I feel like it's a very, very important part of it because unfortunately, we could lose many, many of those calls just because we didn't pick up the phone correctly. And so it does have a, a negative effect on us when it's not done correctly. So I'm going to give you five steps that I want you to be able to follow. Uh, and so the first step is just indicating to the patient, we're really glad that you called. And so part of the way that you're able to do that is by using an appropriate greeting. And what I mean by that is when you answer the phone, you want to take a cheap breath, uh, maybe put a smile on your face because that good body language is going to come out in your tone of voice. And so you want to answer the phone, and you don't want to sound hurried. So if it's slow, if it's short, that's the right kind of greeting. It sounds something like, you know, thank you for calling Dr. Jones's office. This is Larry. I prefer a very, very short greeting. Um, I find in many of these calls that I have audited over the years that we get cut off because our greeting is too long. And so just thanks for calling. Um, this is Larry. Uh, just short and brief. And, you know, mention the doctor's name and all that. Um, I don't feel like you have to say good morning or good afternoon. If you're like me, you kind of forget what time of the day it is and you give the wrong thing. Um, I think if you just say thanks for calling our office, uh, that's okay. I know there's lots of other ways that you can do this. I'm just going to express to you that I feel the best way is if it's just short. Nice tone of voice. Thanks for calling Dr. Jones' office. Uh, this is Larry. So when it's appropriate and it's short like that, the greeting is also friendly because you can use other people that you have called as an example. When that greeting starts getting too long, it gets monotonous for you to say. And so they're trying to tell you, how can I give you the most perfect service today and give you a smile that's just wonderful? You know, it's like they're worn out and they're out of breath by the time they've answered the phone. So a short greeting is also a friendly greeting. Um, something else you want to do to make it friendly 
is use your name last. You see, uh, if you use your name last, people will remember your name. And it's not comfortable for people to talk to somebody or share a lot of information with somebody when they really don't know who they're talking to. So even if you like to say, how can I help you, just switch that. Say, uh, thanks for calling Dr. Jones's office. How can I help you? This is Larry. And what I can promise you is that if you use your name last, they will remember your name, and they'll use it during the conversation, and they're going to feel more comfortable with you, and they're going to think you're, you're, you're more friendly. Um, along with your greeting, you want to be able to get the caller's name. You want to get that uh, very, very uh, early within the conversation. I like to ask patients, hey, once again, I'm Larry. Please tell me your name. And so that way now they've gotten your name again, and you've gotten their name. You want to be able to write that down because you want to use it during the call. It makes the whole call more personable uh, for the patient when you can do that. So also when you convey that you're glad that they called, you're creating a connection because you do want to be able to develop a rapport. And I'm talking about a rapport on a professional level. This happens very, very quickly uh, when you meet people personally, and it happens obviously even faster when you do it on the phone. And so part of the ways that you can develop a rapport uh, with a patient is um, by asking them some questions. And so personal connections are the best. And I would start by asking them, who can we thank for telling you uh, about us? You see, it's likely that they'll say, I got your name from Mrs. Smith, or I got your name off the internet. That way you can comment, oh, you, you saw our, uh, us on the internet. That is great that you found us that way. You know, a lot of our patients find us like that. And so we're glad that you noticed and you, and you gave us a call. When you acknowledge the referral source, what it does is it reassures the patient that they made the right decision in calling you, and it provides them with the kind of encouragement that they need uh, to answer your questions and to be curious about uh, who you are and, and what you're going to be doing. So uh, there's that very, very specific rapport that you want to be de developing. On the second step, uh, what you want to do is find out why did you really call? Um, and what I want to warn everybody against is that you don't want to assume it's what they say. And, and we have to remember that patients don't know what to ask us. And we shouldn't even be expecting that they would. Matter of fact, in the calls that I have audited over the years, most of the questions that they ask are not asked in any logical order and don't necessarily even make sense. I mean, they want to know if you're open on Sunday. Do you see children? Do you do whitening? Will you waive copay? I mean, the questions are all over the board. They don't make any sense. And it's right where we get ourselves into a lot of trouble. So what I'm saying to you is don't assume what they're asking you is what they say. And you have to be careful. This takes practice. That's why I'm saying that you've got to have preparation in all of this, is you have to resist the urge to answer those questions. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute. I, I, they called to ask me some questions. I'm good at giving answers. I, I've got to give them an answer. And you're right. You do, except you don't need to do it right now. Because remember, I'm of the assumption there that they don't really know what to ask. And so this is where we lose the, the conversation. Because when they're asking questions, when they're doing that, what's happening is they control the conversation. And what I mean by controlling the conversation really for you is they control the length of it. They also control the content and what's delivered. Because they're asking, do you waive copay? Are you open on Sundays? Do you have a hygiene department? You know, can I get a Saturday appointment? And you're trying to be real nice and you're thinking, yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, um, I think so. And they go, oh, okay, well, thanks. You sound so sweet. And then they hang up the phone. And we're left on the other side of the line wondering, well, geez, you would have liked us if you would have given me a chance. So I want you to hold that thought. I want you to hold the thought of, geez, you would have liked us if you would have given me the chance. Because I want you to remember that people often don't give us the opportunity. We have to grab that opportunity from the patient. And it doesn't mean that you're rude about it, like you don't say, hey, 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 be quiet. I, I got to ask the questions here. 
That's not what I'm saying. They ask a question. You just have to uh, resist the urge because you want to control the conversation by asking your own question. And what you'll discover is that the questions that you ask actually will take the patient where they want to go and didn't know how to ask you for. So it completely changes the tone of the conversation. See, it sounds something like this. You know, thanks for calling. It seems like you've never been to our office before. You know, uh, you can convey to them, well, welcome to our office. We're glad that you called. Who can we thank? You see, that gets them to start talking. They'll say, oh, well, um, no, I haven't been to your office before. I'm just looking for a dentist. Well, welcome to our office. We're really glad that you called. Who can we thank? Well, I saw your name on the Internet. Well, that's just fantastic. I'm going through this very quickly, but what I want you to see is you're letting the patient talk. It's helping them feel more relaxed with you, and they're going to start to learn that, hey, I'm going to get my needs met by doing this. We also know that the questions they ask are not in any logical order, so it's not a very coherent conversation uh, when you do this. So you can convey to the patient, I want to make sure that I do this correctly so that you'll get the right appointment and proper amount of time. Tell me more about, and then you, know, you may want to discover the reason for their call or if they have any particular um, uh, things that need to be addressed right away. So, I want to get out a best practices alert here. Uh, you'll see a few of these as we're coming along because what I've noticed in the people who are most successful in converting these phone calls is that they have a very specific outline that they follow. And, and I know why they do it. Either, either they did it through, um, you know, by giving it some thought or maybe through trial and error, but I know they got to that point because having a specific outline that you follow provides consistency. It follows a logical order, uh, and what I mean by that is it makes sense, and that means that the patient can remember the details. It gives them all the reasons why uh, they should be calling you. So if you're developing an outline the way that I'd like you to, the first step is in your outline, regardless of what the patient says or what they ask for, you have to tell them welcome. Thanks for calling. I'm, I'm really glad that you're here. And I'm wondering who we can thank for telling you about us. See, the people who are most successful in, in, in converting these calls, they start to develop a rapport. And this is one of the ways to be able to do that is by getting them to make that personal connection with you. So it's very, very important uh, that you do that. The third thing is let me get a little bit more information. And so once you've made a connection with the patient, then it makes sense. I want to do this correctly. Uh, let me make sure that we schedule you for the proper amount of time or, or give you the right appointment. So I'd like to gather a little bit more information. And that's where you can start to ask questions about if they're having any particular concerns uh, at this time. So um, I'll keep adding these alerts so that you can develop your outline uh, as we go along. So the second, or excuse me, the third step in creating your customer service personality is conveying to the patient that I understand what you need. So if, if I just flip back to the outline where you had asked, let me get a little bit more information. You know, are you having any particular concerns at this time? Um, that's probably where you'll also want to get their name, their address, uh, their email address, uh, their phone number, just in case you get cut off so that you can call them back, uh, that you've already got that information. Uh, as well as, like I said, you know, are you having any particular concerns at, at this time? Is there anything that um, I need to share with the doctor or that we need to prepare for before you get here? You want to let the patient talk because you want to be able to understand what that patient needs and you want to be able to convey that to them. You see, when they sense that you understand what they're looking for and you understand their problem, for instance, if the patient says, well, I have this tooth, it's been bothering me for some time, um, I don't feel like I need to, you know, have an emergency visit, but I, I feel like some doctor ought to look at it, it's not going away. Well, you see, then you can mention to the patient, well, based on what you have told me, the best thing for you would be to, you know, meet with our doctor, uh, have your teeth cleaned, whatever it is that you think that it is. But when you're able to phrase it that way, based on what you've told me, what the patient senses 
is that you have made a decision with my input. And because you know as well as I do, you're dealing with a very, very stubborn demographic of people who think they know more than you do. Uh, it's very important that they feel like they've had some input uh, into any decision that you've made. Um, you can clarify with them. Tell me if I got this right. You know, this tooth has been bothering you. It's been quite some time. You haven't been able to get any relief from it. Uh, you've taken a Tylenol, and that seems to help, uh, but for just a very short period of time. And the patient will, will say, yes, you know, that's what's going on, so I feel like I need to see the doctor. Well, based on what you've told me, the best thing for you would be this. Uh, it's very important that you convey to the patient that you understand uh, what is going on with them. The fourth step is actually for you to get excited. This is where your tone of voice uh, is really important there. And I'm not talking about excited like, this is really going to be great, and you're going to love coming to us, and we can't wait to see you. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. We want to keep this very professional. I'm talking about expressing your excitement by promoting the practice and the doctor. Uh, matter of fact, I find, this is another best practices alert here, that the offices that are the best at converting these calls, they know what the practice does well. And so what I'd ask all of you to do, if you're taking notes, uh, make an action plan for yourself. And um, make a note for yourself to say, hey, what is it that we do really well? Uh, is it implants? Is it veneers? Is it treating hygiene patients? Is it gum therapy? Um, is it doing dentures? Uh, is it sleep dentistry? I mean, it, it, there's a wide variety of things, but I would say to yourself, do you have a list of the things that you do really, really well in your office? Because when you know what you do really well, it makes it very easy for you to promote it with your patient by saying things like, gosh, we do that really well. Our doctors had a lot of training in that area, so I know we're going to be able to help you. So um, as a best practices alert, uh, get a list there of the things that you do really, really well. I, I won't be surprised if the list that you have is very, very long, and I don't think you'll be surprised either. So along with getting excited and showing your excitement and promoting the practice, compliment the practice. You know, use phrases like you've called the right place. Oh, geez, you're going to love our doctor. You know, patients tell us they really like uh, things like that. Um, the doctor does a great job with veneers or with implants. Um, I hope you're not shocked that these are not complicated phrases. They're not tricky things to say. Um, you can take the spirit of what I'm trying to convey here and choose your own words, but it doesn't have to be complicated. You know that people do not communicate on a really, really high level. We don't use really big words in our culture. We don't use long sentences. We say things very, very short. Think like a text. You know, it works for a lot of people. Uh, but, pr but compliment the office. Glad that you called. You're going to love our doctor. Uh, we spent a lot of time studying these things, so I feel like we're going to be able to help you. Again, you're offering them reassurance, and you're offering them encouragement that they've made the, the right decision. You see, I'm also a firm believer that if you can't provide the patient with everything that they want, because maybe they're looking for Saturday appointments, um, but you're not open on Saturday. Um, or maybe they want uh, an appointment in the evening, and you're not open in the evening. You see, if they like what they hear, you had to say to them made sense, there's a high probability, because I see it all the time, that they'll put those things on the side. And possibly they'll say, well, you know what, I really was looking for something on Saturday, but I've never called an office where people sounded so positive about where they work, and I'm a little bit afraid to go to the dentist, so I want to be around people like you who want to be at work. You see, we conveyed that through our tone of voice and the way that we complimented uh, the office. So if you can be positive that way, there's a real good chance they'll put these other things on the side. And we need that because we can't be all things or offer all the flexibility that uh, many, many patients want today. The fifth step is, I hope you've noticed, save all those boring details until the end. You know, someone says they'd like an appointment, you certainly don't want to start out with, well, yeah, we'll get you in for an exam and x-rays, because I can't think of anything that would make anybody yawn faster than that. 
And I also want you to remember that when you jump right to, oh, well, we'll get you an exam and an x-ray, you already offered them a solution before they gave any input. You've made a decision without their input. And it's likely that they're going to start to resist you for that because they want to give their input. You know, people think they know more than you today. They're suspicious. They're cynical. They're distrustful. And so as soon as you come to some conclusion about what they need, before they've had a chance to let you know, we're going to get in trouble. And so the details are boring, too. So let's just put those in the end, all that name, rank, serial number stuff. You can do that later. Let's get the appointment first. Our main objective when we pick up the phone is to make sure that the person who's calling schedules an appointment with us. That's what we want to do. So we want to get them excited or at least curious about serial number, blood type, and, and all that. We don't want this phone call to be like that at all. Uh, we want it to be much more friendly, and I want you to have a lot more uh, flexibility in talking to your patient. So in developing your specific outline, the fourth step would be that you want to prepare the patient for their appointment. You see, now that you've found out what it was that you know has been going on with them, You've made a decision about what would be best for them. You should ought to come in and have the doctor take a look at this, uh, perhaps have a comprehensive oral, oral evaluation. Mrs. Jones, let me explain to you what will happen uh, when you get here. And so this is a, a very, very important part of creating curiosity with the patient is letting them know what you'll do. Um, I'll go out on a limb here. I'll bet a lot of you who are listening come from practices that deliver comprehensive care. And so that tells me that you do things differently in your office than most other uh, dentists will do. And we know when things are different, people get more suspicious when you're already a little bit cynical and suspicious as it is. So you want to let people know, hey, you know, it sounds like you need a, an exam from the doctor. Uh, he's very, very thorough. We're going to reserve a full 90 minutes or hour or whatever it takes. Uh, for you to be in our office, and during this time, the doctor is going to do these things. So if you don't have a list of what the doctor does during the exam, I want you to put that on your action plan to find out what he does. Because if you can stop and tell the patient, you're going to be here for an hour, and during that time, we are going to take your blood pressure. We are going to review the medications that you are on to see if they aren't complicating things in your mouth. We're going to check for oral can cancer. We are going to look for gum disease. We're going to evaluate the condition of any dentistry that's already in your mouth. You see, we look for these things because if we see something going on in your mouth that we know is going to cause a problem for you sometime down the road, well, Dr. Smith is going to want to talk to you about that. This way, you can let us know what you'd like to do.
any other questions about what we have talked about uh, or your first visit, most of the time they say, no, you have been very, very thorough. Um, I don't have any other questions. I couldn't think of, uh, of anything. So I'm going to give you that as another best practices alert is that you want to get feedback from the patient because patients respect decisions uh, when they're made with their input. That's what's very, very important. So you can ask them things like, how does that sound? You know, what, what, what do you think? What other questions about our office can I answer for you? Uh, tell me, do you agree or, or do you disagree? Um, I'm not afraid of their answer because if they like what they hear, they're going to go along with it. And in the event that they do have some questions, well, now we can talk about it. And you've made it very, very safe for them to provide their input because you ask them. So this is a very, very important part of converting patients is making them feel like they have some control over what is going on. So, so what do you say? Okay, uh, so somebody calls and this one's a little bit easy, but if you're a brand new patient, uh, I would start with, well, welcome to our office. You know, uh, we really enjoy working with new patients, so I'm, I'm glad that you called. A matter of fact, is there anybody that we can thank for telling you about us? And, and they'll, they'll say something and you want to acknowledge it. Well, you know what? I want to make sure that we uh, get the right appointment for you and we do this, you know, by the book. So let me get a little bit more information. So that's where you'll want to get their name, their address, their email address, so on and so forth. You know, well, geez, based on what you've told me, the best thing for you would be, and then explain what you think they should do, whether it's a comprehensive oral evaluation, uh, you know, maybe come in to see the hygienist, or uh, maybe it's an emergency visit. You ought to get in here today. Um, but you want to uh, make your decision about what they need, prepare the patient for what will happen, and then ask them if they have any additional questions. Now, I know uh, another good practices alert here is that you want to be able to show empathy for the patient. So what I mean by empathy is that you reflect their feelings. If they say something to you like, I do have this tooth that's bothering me, it's been quite some time, I think a doctor needs to take a look at it, although I, you know, I don't have time to come today, I can you know, schedule an appointment, expressing, geez, I'm sorry to hear that you've been uncomfortable. You see, just you uh, reflecting back to them uh, what they have said further tells them, okay, you understand it about me. You understand what's going on and the issues that I have. So you, you reflect their feelings. Very, very important. Now, let's say, for instance, if this is a new insurance kind of patient. I know that there's those calls out there where the patient will say, do you take, you know, XYZ kind of insurance? And I just want you to hear that if you answer that question, if you go right into answering that question and you say, well, no, we don't participate and um, we're, we're considered out of network, so you'll have to pay us when you come here. I mean, it was hard for me to even say that and not change my tone of voice uh, because it's so negative. And of course, when it's negative, the patient who doesn't know you is going to say, oh, okay, well, thanks. I was looking for somebody who took my insurance, so I'll just keep calling everybody else who's on the list. Bye. And, and then they hang up. We can't afford to have that happen. Now, I know some of you do participate with a lot of insurance, but you may not participate with every plan that's out there. And I want you to understand that it doesn't mean that those patients can't come to your office. And so somebody says, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to know if you take, you know, whatever kind of insurance. I'd let them know your insurance um, company works with us as a non-participating provider. Many of our patients who have the same plan come to our office, so we know there's an out-of-network benefit. Um, you know, they really like us, and I think you will too. Sounds like you haven't been here before. Now, I know how that patient's going to respond. They're going to say, well, no, I've, I've not been there before. I'm, I'm just looking for somebody who's on my plan. Baby, welcome. We're so glad that you called. Uh, if, if, if I'm making any sense here, is I, I just made a very, very quick transition. I very briefly answered their question, and then I asked them a question. Sounds like you haven't been here before. And they're going to say, well, no, because I'm looking for somebody who's um, on my plan. Well, welcome to our practice. 
um, we're really glad that you called. We like working with new patients. Well, I know, but if, if you're not on his plan, I don't know that I can come here. Well, we, we, we know that you can come here because we do work with your insurance company as a non-participating provider. Um, we treat lots of other patients who have the same plan, so we, we know that there's an out-of-network benefit. Yeah, but that, that sounds like it's going to cost me more. Well, you know, those other patients with your plan who still come here, um, they tell us that it is a little bit more, um, not that much, just a little bit, but they feel like it's really worth it. And I feel like if you gave us a try, you'd like us to, just like they did. So I find that when you address it that way and uh, you start welcoming them and start asking them questions, you know, who can we thank and let me get a little bit more information, well, let's see if this would be the right place for you or not. You know. We'll find out later when we get to some of those boring details whether it's really, really going to work or not. What I don't want you to do is cut yourself off at the knees. You know, if I don't get a chance to talk to them about who we are and what we do, how do they know whether they're really going to like us or not? I can promise you, if you get yourself to a point where you can raise their curiosity level and talk about your exam, then they are going to realize, hey, you're different. I think I, think I need to go to you. Um, let's say if this is a shopping patient. I hear tons of phone calls like that right now. Uh, matter of fact, as the economy had gotten bad, more and more people are shopping because they want to know the cost of things. Uh, lots of people have lost their insurance or if they had insurance, it's not as good as it used to be. So we don't want that to mean that people can't come to us. So if you're a shopping patient, again, I'd show some empathy. I'm, I'm sorry to learn that you need dental treatment. What makes you think you need? You know, if they ask, like, well, um, how much is an implant? I wouldn't start with, well, implants here are $10,000, you know, because they're going to say, well, that's more than I wanted to spend. <laughs> Matter of fact, probably any number you say is going to be more than they wanted to spend. So when they say how much is a veneer or how much is a crown or a filling or, or whatever, uh, I would say, geez, I'm sorry to learn that you need dental treatment. Well, what makes you think you need that, you know, or what, whatever it was? They'll explain they've either been to another dentist or somebody else has, um, you know, told them that they needed the treatment. I don't think that there's anything wrong with quoting a fee with one exception. Um, I think you would only fight with people if you try to tell them, well, I really can't tell you how much it is. There's so many variables. Patients don't understand what all those variables are, and so they'll think that you're trying to pull something over on them. Um, I don't see anything wrong with quoting a fee. Um, I think so long as you do it with a follow-up. And so how that sounds is, you know, we're happy to provide our patients with many choices when it comes to crowns. And so that means that the fee can vary quite a bit. Um, matter of fact, it could run between, you know, this and, and, and that amount, uh, depending on what you choose. Um, but Mrs. Jones, how does that sound? You see, you want to ask that follow-up question, because I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, boy, that sounds like that's really expensive. But you see, now you've engaged them in a conversation that gives you the opportunity to talk to the patient about, yeah, it, it is expensive, and, and let me tell you why you're going to love it. Because we treat a lot of patients in our practice who came to us from other offices saying that they were disappointed in the care that they had gotten. And you know what? When we looked in their mouth and saw the quality of the materials that were used, well, we knew the doctor did the best he could uh, with what he had to work with. So we're real happy to give our patients the quality that they're looking for. My point to all of you is I think it's okay to quote a fee. I, I don't think it scares anybody away if you have that follow-up question. Ms. Jones, how does that sound? Because they'll tell you either it sounds okay or it doesn't. More often than not, they'll say, geez, it sounds really high compared to other doctors that I have called. But then it, you're in a conversation with them now, and that's what you want. You want it are going to be better than what somebody else might, might be doing. Um, I also like it when you do it this way, because what I noticed with these best practices is that we treat everybody the same. We don't have to treat anybody different. We don't have to act like, oh, you're just a shopper or you don't care about comprehensive treatment because when we start developing that attitude, it develops in our tone of voice. 
And so that's when we start to sound impatient or as if though we can't be bothered. And we don't want to develop a reputation like that. I want to give everybody the same opportunity to get to know us and decide for themselves. And I'm not a gambler, but I, I have gambled often in this issue. I'm very comfortable with what I see patients deciding for themselves. Because when they like what they hear and they like the way that you say it, there's a really, really good chance that they're going to choose you. So everybody gets treated exactly the same, and it doesn't have to be any complicated. Those are the things that I wanted to share with you. Um, I thought I'd put a picture of myself um, at the end here. I don't know if my voice and, and my physical picture matches up with what you, what you thought I'd look like, but, but if it doesn't, then uh, and, and you think I look better than I sound, or, or maybe I sound better than I look, uh, then you'll know the power of the tone of voice. But we still have some time here, so I wanted to see if there were any other questions that I might be able to answer for you. Hey, Larry. Uh, we, we had a couple questions come in. Um, certainly, if, if uh, anybody has any other questions as, as I go through these, uh, feel free to put them into the, the question box you should see in, in your uh, in, in on your little uh, slide to the right. Um, the first question, Larry, was um, what's a good uh, first step to come up with this outline if they don't have one in place right now? Uh, well, you know, I, I gladly send them, you know, what I call my VIP slip um, if they wanted something like that. But the, the first step is really just to sit down and figure out what are, what are we good at? You know, what, what are we good at and what is it that we want everybody to know about our office? That's, that's where I would start. Great, great. And, and should this be something that, that uh, multiple people within the office um, do uh, with, with the, the doctor? Oh, you know what, I think that this is a, that's a great question. Um, if I'm understanding exactly, you know, what they were asking is, yep, I would do it with the whole team. What are we good at? And what do we want people to know about us? Um, I would also want to get the team together to say, hey, what goes on during our exam? Because we do want to be able to describe that to our patients. I mean, what I want the audience to hear is, if somebody calls and says, I want an appointment, and you're going to respond by saying, well, yeah, we're going to get you in for an exam in x-rays, if that's your answer, and you find that many people either don't make appointments or worse, make appointments and don't show up for them, that's the reason why. It's because they don't understand how, oh, I examine x-ray, that's what I need. You see, there we're kind of overthinking things because it makes perfect sense to us to give the patient an exam and an x-ray because how would we know what they ever needed or how could we ever diagnose them if we didn't have that information. But to a lay person, trust me, that doesn't make any sense at all. So I think having a list of how you want to talk about your exam, you know, I think would be very, very important. So I think you should do it with the whole team. The other part, if I'm answering the question correctly, is that with a very, very simple outline, thanks for calling our office, who could we thank, you know, for telling you about us, let me find out a little bit more information, let me tell you about the exam, what other questions. If you can follow that simple outline, well, you know what, anybody in the office, if they pick up the phone and they have a new patient, it could make for a very cohesive call. You don't have to say, well, oh, I don't do this. You'll have to talk to Susie. <gasps> She's busy right now. You know, that type of stuff. Um, you know what I mean? You can go ahead and do it yourself uh, with that patient. It shouldn't take any uh, specialized kind of training just to talk to people about who you are and what you do, uh, unless you're afraid of who you are and what you do. Great, great. We had another uh, question come in that says, how do we avoid getting trapped in a conversation about specific equi equipment functions? Well, I, I, I'm sorry, say that again, trapped? Um, trapped in the conversations about specific equipment functions. I'm, I'm thinking since you don't want to be trapped um, about, I mean, I'm wondering if they mean like what kind of, how the equipment works. Larry? Uh, Judy, I'm, yes. Hi. Judy, I'm actually, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm actually uh, unmuting you, so I, why don't you go ahead and, and ask your question. 
Okay. I was just wondering, we do um, a dermal practice, and we do uh, use a intensive pulse laser. Um, okay. Okay. And patients call all the time. This laser does um, skin tightening, photo rejuvenation, and hair removal. And when oh, sign me up. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and patients always call, and they ask a ton of questions. And my um, boss, you know, he says, you know, you don't want to go into too much detail. So I try not to go into too much detail. And then the patients keep inquiring, like, so many, they have so many questions for me. And I don't know how to kind of back away without turning them away. And I, I just kind of want to know if there's any anything I can, any skills I can use to kind of create or turn around the situation, well, okay, the conversation? Yep, yep. Well, you, you're dealing now with people who probably think they know more than you, and they've probably done a lot of their own research about these different lasers, and so they know that some work differently than others. Um, and I think it's great that you understand a lot about how yours works and how it's different from, you know, from other people. Um, my sense is what the patient really cares about is the kind of result that you're going to get. Okay. And so if you can very, very briefly just talk to them about it's this kind of laser pulse, da, 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 da. And the reason why the doctor chose this type of technology is because it does this to the skin and gives you this kind of glow and, you know, your husband's going to take you on a cruise when you come home. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? If, if, if I'm making any sense is if you stick to the results, Okay. Uh, and then ask them, you know, have I answered your question? Y you might find that you've satisfied them. Okay, so stick to the results. Yeah, H have I answered your question? Yes, it's yeah. just, it's very hard I get backed into, I feel like I'm backed into a corner because they keep asking me more and more questions and I'm not knowledgeable enough to answer a lot of the questions too. Um, therefore, because I always try and say c you can come in for your free consultation and it's, no, 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 I don't want to schedule the appointment. That's what I keep throwing out there. It's a free consultation. Come in, the doctor knows. Yep. You're you know. dealing with very, very savvy people today. <laughs> uh, and you're right. So they're thinking, I don't want to waste my time. So uh, again, um, as you're learning about this piece of equipment, there might even be a webinar or some information that the sales rep could give you okay. uh, to help you answer more of those questions. Okay. Uh, but again, I would continue to focus on the results. Okay. Uh, you Thank know, Ms. Jones, it's because it does this to the skin and it won't do that and it won't leave bumps or wrinkles or a rash. Um, that's why this technology was chosen. Great. Thank you so and, much. And, and it's what our patients tell us they enjoy most about having this procedure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if, if, if you'd like to <laughs> ask your question, it sounds like I got, uh, I, I got you with your dog. <laughs> Yay! Perfect timing, right? <laughs> I think we're good on our end, Kevin. I think it was very helpful and, you know, kind of seeing, because um, we talked about some of the things that we were doing incorrectly with those particular questions, insurance and, and people calling Yep, I, I feel like if you're already doing it and it helps you be more comfortable uh, in talking about it, that is the best thing that you can do because, again, it'll come out in your tone of voice. Great. Thank you. You're, you're, you're welcome. Perfect. Um, now, one, uh, one more question, Larry, um, that we have is um, what's the best way to practice this and how often uh, would it do some of the better practices um, that you work with um, spend time practicing this within? Well, some, some of you won't like uh, this answer because I don't exactly like it myself. Um, you had said earlier that you're recording this webinar and that you would be sending me a copy. So for me to know that I have been clear and used the proper tone of voice and answered people's questions correctly, um, I'm, I'm going to have to listen to this webinar. And I think I'm a lot like a lot of other people. I hate the sound of my voice in a recording. Uh, and so what I would tell all of you is, particularly if you're Ads Next customers, um, listen to your, your call, you know. And um, you might have to do it privately in a room where there's nobody else there. Or if you really, really want to get good at it, 
let other people in the office hear how you respond to questions. Um, sometimes we're too hard on ourselves, and then, you know, other times we're, we're, we're not hard enough. But I think that Great. would be the best way to, to practice it, is to listen to what you're saying. Great. Great. And um, I did have one final question come in, and now, then I'm going to cut it off because I want to make sure that we keep to our schedule. But, um, you know, what are some of the biggest uh, reasons people would choose uh, uh, an out-of-network provider based on benefits? Uh, no, very good question. Um, the biggest way that I see that you're able to uh, convince somebody that it would be worth seeing you is by letting them know about other patients who have done the same thing. You see, when they realize that they're just not walking off a ledge on their own, um, it makes them feel more comfortable about doing that. And they will challenge you. They'll say, but wait a minute, if it's out of network, it's going to cost me more. But as I said earlier, you can make them feel comfortable. You know, other patients who, who come here anyway, uh, even though it's out of network, you know, they do tell us it's a little bit more, but, but not that much, and they feel like it's worth it. And, and I think that you'll think it's worth it also. So if I'm making any sense here in these last few seconds, it's talk about the way other people liked it not what you like or what you want or what the doctor thinks or what they shouldn't do. Talk about, oh, no, there's lots of other people, if, if that makes any sense. Perfect, perfect. Well, Larry, th thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate everybody jumping on, on the phone call. I know this is right in the middle of the day and, and isn't the, um, always the easiest thing to, to block off an hour of, of practice time. So. Um, we hope that you uh, got a lot out of the call. Um, again, this is going to be our first sort of step into really getting more involved in, in, in helping um, our practices and the practice, um, convert these call opportunities that come in and, and really do some of the best practices that, that we've heard on this call and, and, and uh, uh, other, uh, other things we've talked about in the past as well. So, uh, thanks again, and, and have a happy holiday, and, and uh, we look forward to our next call probably uh, in a month or two. Thank you so much. Thank you.